Welcome to Tour Truck Tuesday. Hope everyone out there is keeping safe and well. My name is Chris Trot, and I work for the tour team at TaylorMade Golf. During self-isolation, I've got a little tip that we can do to make sure our lie angles are correct on our irons. So when we do get back to golfing, we're one step ahead of the competition. Lie angles are something that tour players check every week. We frequently see John Rahm and Rory McIlroy coming on the truck and working out if anything is slightly off for their game. But how can we test this during self-isolation? All you're gonna need is a rubber mat and put on your golf kicks because you don't wanna be standing too low for this and you wanna try and recreate the feel that you have when you're actually out playing golf. So to kick things off, Grab your seven iron, and I'm gonna show you what lie angle actually is before we get going. It's the contact point between the middle of the sole and the golf shaft. So the angle created middle of the sole and the golf shaft. And I say contact point because what we're looking at is where we strike the turf. And you can manipulate that for certain shots that you might wanna hit, or you might identify certain shots that you're seeing by doing this test. So to start, Sharpie marker the heel side and the toe side of the grooves and put a long line through the middle. That'll become clear in a second. Then get yourself ready, create your imaginary shot in your head and make a smooth swing and recreate that shot. Okay, flip the club. You've got your markers in there. Now you're getting given information. And take a look as to where we've hit. Now I put the line through the middle because a lot of you have question, asked questions on Instagram about loft and saying, look, if I strengthen my lofts, what does it do to the club? Well, it can change bounce. So let's just define what bounce is. Bounce is the angle created and the camber in the sole. And you need bounce because when the club goes into the turf, Bounce will help the club come out of the turf. And this 760 model that I'm using has a slightly camber or a quite slightly chamfered leading edge, okay? A blunt leading edge. So that will go into the turf, but the bounce will then bring it out. Now, I'm looking here and you can see that my lofts are good. If I'd manipulated the lofts, this middle strike point, so the bottom point of the rubber marking, might be towards the leading edge. Or if I'd made them weaker, I would reveal the back edge, therefore there'd be too much bounce. But the first thing that jumps out at me is a mark from front to back of the blade shows me that the bounce is good on this seven iron. Then you look at it between the heel and the toe markings and you can see that it's pretty neutral with my center point being just there so that that's good i mean you can see here that the loft and the lie of that seven iron are good so continue the exercise move into the six the seven is the pivot point of the set it's where the long irons will start and where the short irons will pivot and go to so it's always a good place to start so six iron marked up Recreate the shot, picture it in your head. Make the smooth swing, happy with that. Now you can evaluate the measurements and you can see pretty good. Maybe slightly heel side with the center point, maybe, but all in all, pretty acceptable and a good marking. Do the same, like I say, throughout the set. And once you've got everything marked up, you can then go to a very old school technique. Take both the clubs, because now what you're looking for is an outlier. You're looking to see if there's something that isn't creating the shots you were hitting before we went into this section, or if there was something jumping out. Lay the clubs down flat, and you know from the way a set should grade that you're gonna have the long irons, because the shafts are longer, so I'll just grab a three iron for this, is going to be flatter than if I get my pitching wedge, which will be more upright because we stand closer to the golf ball. So keep that in mind. But take your two clubs that you've marked up next to each other, lay them down. So again, I should have a slightly different angle there. Move them up, place your finger on the bottom and make sure that the soles are aligned, okay? So you've got the grooves and the soles aligned, both top and bottom. And you can see, if you look at the other end of my golf clubs now, that the grips are offset by half a grip. So what I mean by that is I've got 
half a grip that you should be able to see from your camera angle on one side and the other. And that shows you that the seven iron is sitting a little bit higher than the six. That shows you if it's marked up, matched up correctly, centers of the blade, that your iron set is graded between the two clubs perfectly. And that would make sense because the markings when we had them on the soles were both fairly well matched. So I know my six and seven are good. Now something to keep into mind as you do this exercise through the set, long irons you generate more speed with usually, you're always hitting flat out golf shots. So perhaps you want to favor a certain side on the long iron. Perhaps you don't want to get what's called a double cross where the heel would dig in and the blade might face to the left and you get long left. Maybe your analytics, if you keep them through my, my Round Pro, which I'll come back to and cover more about that, but maybe your analytics are showing you've got long left or your coach is highlighting it. So go through this test again with a long iron and keep in mind that you may want to hit a certain shot with the long iron. So you can see here that the marking on my long iron, now granted it wasn't the best of strikes, off the mat, but there's markings in this area here. Now what that indicates to me is, now I do use this off a tee a little bit, but I don't mind seeing the toe catch a fraction because that means that it's gonna create a slightly open club face if the toe is catching and the divot is a fraction toe deep, I would like that as a preference. I'd like my long irons to have that because my miss can be steep and up and tilting the golf shaft this way to give me long left. So I would perhaps set my irons up to be slightly toe deep in the divots. Something to keep in mind as you go through your set and as you grade your set, because when you get into tall lie angles, quite often the long irons will be a little bit flatter than what you would see on the shelf. All things to consider when you are checking your iron set and when you are creating the right set for you. So take charge of your own irons, do this test, look at the feedback, and then when we all return to golf, you can go into the pro shop or get on a loft and lie machine, and you can highlight any issues that might be in the set before we get back playing. If this information and this drill is something that you like, subscribe, follow me on YouTube, write in the comments, I, I do check them, and let me know if this has been helpful for your game, I'm interested to know. So until the next session when I'm gonna cover wedges and what we can look for in there, hope everyone stays safe and well, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks guys.